teach us about different rules in prayer. We don't learn how to pray by praying. We have been through that. I have been a religious person. When you say, how do we pray? You just pray. If you pray, you will learn how to pray. No. You learn how to pray by being taught. The disciples in the book of Luke, Luke chapter 11, verses 1 to 2, they asked Jesus, they said, Jesus Christ, and it came to pass that as he was praying in a certain place, when he finished, that one of his disciples told him, Lord, teach us to pray. Even as John taught his disciples. So John was smart enough to teach his disciples to pray. So one of the disciples went to Jesus and said, Jesus, teach us to pray. And Jesus Christ did not say, no, 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 just go and pray. Look at verse 2. He said to them, when you pray, say this. So he taught them how to pray. You need, you and I need to be taught how to pray. A lot of us Christians just start a shoot because we don't know how to pray. Today, I am going to teach us how to pray. Amen. Many people have roadblocks with prayers due to wrong rules or application of the wrong rule. If you use the wrong rule for your prayers, it will not be answered. No wonder we just pray and we find out that our prayers are not answered. I have prayed, I have fasted, I have gone to the mountain, I have called the prophet, I have done this. Perhaps you are not praying right. You will get it right from today. In the name of Jesus. One thing I want us to understand is that the devil has been defeated. The Bible tells us in the book of Colossians chapter 2 verse 15. Colossians chapter 2 verse 15. Having discerned principalities and powers, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them in it. Jesus Christ has defeated the devil. So I want your courage to rise. That you are, even when you go to God, to pray to God about anything, the devil has no part in it because he has been defeated. Now, what he does now is to camouflage. Is to bring things as if they are real. But it comes with fear. And fear is not real. Actually, somebody said fear is fake evidence appearing real. So he brings fake, fake evidence to you. But if you know this scripture, you will know that the devil has been totally and eternally defeated over you. So when you go to God, you don't mind the devil. But when you go to God, you go to God in the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus has been given unto us. This same Jesus that deserved principalities, that deserved the powers, making a public spectacle of them, he has given us his name. In the book of Mark chapter 16, verse 17, Mark 16, 17, these signs will follow those who believe. In my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. And in the book of Philippians chapter 2 verses 9 to 10, Philippians 2 text says, Therefore God has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name. That at the name of Jesus every knee should bow. Of those in heaven and of those on earth and of those under the earth. Everywhere has been taken care of for knees to bow and for your prayer to gain ascension to heaven. So you have no worry about what the devil can do to you. I want you to get that. Your place, you are jointly seated in Christ. In fact, not only are you jointly seated in Christ, you have Jesus Christ inside of you. So when you are talking, you are praying in the name of Jesus. You are praying in the name of somebody that is resident inside of you. So don't worry about what the devil will do about your prayer. We're going to talk today uh, about different kinds of prayers as demonstrated in the New Testament. The reason I'm talking about the New Testament is because we are New Testament believers. In the Old Testament, they did not have the privilege of the name of Jesus. And if you look at the Mark chapter 16 that we read, it says in my name. In my name, when you cast out demons, signs and wonders will follow you. So the name of Jesus has been given unto us as an approval, as a stamp of authority. But in the Old Testament, they didn't have that privilege. 
They did not have the Holy Spirit residing in them to help them to pray. We do this time. We are privileged people. Hallelujah. Turn to your neighbor. Tell your neighbor you are privileged. We were born in a time and a season where things have been made for us. Hallelujah. That is exciting for me. It makes my prayer life to be easier. Because the, the people in the Old Testament had to struggle. They struggled with prayers. They struggled with demons. Demons were not cast out. They were not arrested at that time because Colossians 2.15 had not happened. Hallelujah. So we are privileged. The first one that I want to talk to you about this afternoon is the prayer of faith. The prayer of faith. As seen in Matthew chapter 21, let's read verses 21 to 22. Matthew. So Jesus answered and said to them, Assuredly, I say to you, if you have faith and do not doubt, you will not only do what was done to the fig tree, but also if you say to this mountain, be removed and be cast to the sea, it will be done. And whatever things you ask in prayer, believe in them, you will receive. Whatever that you ask in prayer, believe in, you will receive it. Mark eleven twenty four. 24. Therefore I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. Out of two or more witnesses, the truth will be established. The Lord Jesus Christ said it in different places in the scripture that we will pray in faith, believing that we have received what we have, we will receive it. The prayer of faith applies primarily to you as an individual. The prayer of faith is for a person's own life. It, appear, it applies to personal situations and circumstances. You pray for yourself to receive something that legally belongs to you. And once you pray the prayer of faith, you pray it once and you continue to thank God for the answer. The prayer of faith is a prayer that you pray one time believing God that God has answered you. That means that you already know that it is the will of God for that prayer. You are already said to you have enough faith in you to believe God. And those kinds of prayers are for us. Why is it that we may not get results when we pray for somebody else like that? Because that person may not have enough faith. So, and your faith can only work as far. So, if you are praying for yourself, I'm looking to get my papers. I already know that it is in the scriptures in Joshua chapter 1 verse 3 that wherever the soul of my feet touches, the Lord has gotten it for me. So I know that for sure. And I trust God. I have faith in God that God that has brought me to this nation is settling me in this nation. Then I pray that prayer of faith. And the next thing that I do is to say thank you, Father. Because you have answered my prayer, I know that if the prayer of faith is, and is done one time. So you don't go back and be repeating it or allow the devil to come back and be repeating it to you. The next thing you want to do after you have prayed the prayer of faith is to thank God over it. Now, the reason that your prayer of faith may not work for somebody else is because each and every one of us is expected to grow in faith. So for you to be able to pray the prayer of faith, you must have grown in faith. And how does faith come? Faith comes by hearing. And hearing the word of God. That means that you must be hearing the word of God. So when I had my child, if I was praying for him to receive something, maybe he was sick, and I prayed for him, after a while, when he grows up, God expects him to have grown to a level that at 18, I should not be praying for him. His faith must be strong enough to receive for himself. So if I continue to pray for him as I was praying for him when he was two years old, God may not answer that prayer. Because, or if he expects me to do that, and he cannot use his faith. So God expects us to grow. That is the reason why we must continue to grow in faith. So that we can use our faith to move mountains. Kenneth Aiken was talking about his sister. He had a sister. For a while, she had cancer. And he prayed.
prayed for her. He prayed on her behalf, using his own faith to pray. And she was healed of the cancer. Everything was gone. God told him that he, she would be healed. But five years later, the cancer came back. And he was getting aggressive and she was getting weaker. And he was praying for her, using his own faith. And God told Kenneth, he said, your sister is going to die. And Kenneth asked God, why? God said, I gave her five years to develop her faith. But she remained a baby. Your faith is no longer permitted to carry her. And that is the essence of the prayer of faith. We must grow in faith. It is easy to pray the prayer of faith when we grow in faith. And we must continually grow in faith. Examples from the scripture, one of them is Jairus. In the book of Mark chapter 5, 22 to 24, Mark chapter 5, and behold, one of the rulers of the synagogue came, Jairus by name, and when he saw him, he fell at his feet and begged him earnestly. That's how they prayed, then they would be begged when they were praying, saying, my little daughter, so that means that she was little, about 12 years old, lies at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her, that she may be healed, and she will live. So Jesus went with him and a great multitude followed. But if you look at 35, verses 35 to 42. Let's go to 35. While he was still speaking, so he was, that's when he was interrupted by the woman with the issue of blood. Some came from the ruler's, of the ruler's house and said, your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? As soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, he said to the ruler of the synagogue, do not be afraid but believe. And the rest of the story, Jesus went there. But what I want to bring out there was the faith that Jairus had. He had the faith. Now, if, now Jesus went into Jairus' house and healed that daughter, she was healed. In 25 years, that daughter got sick again. Because of the fact that it is a prayer of faith, that daughter needed to use her own faith. This, another example is the other woman that was with the, the woman with the issue of blood. The Bible said that she heard about Jesus and she went to him. Faith comes by hearing. She heard about Jesus and she went to him. Actually, when she touched the hem of, the, of, the, of Jesus' garment, she kept saying, if I can touch the hem of his garment, I will be made whole. And the moment she touched the hem, she was made whole. The virtue, virtue was released from Christ. And after she was made whole, she felt everything was gone. And Jesus Christ told him, told her that her faith had made her own. Another one is blind Bartimaeus. Blind Bartimaeus is found in Mark chapter 10, verses 46 to 52. Now they came to Jericho. As he went out of Jericho with his disciples and a great multitude, blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the road begging. And when he heard, he heard, he heard, faith comes by hearing. He heard that Jesus, that it was Jesus that he has been hearing about. He began to cry out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus Christ had mercy on, her, on him and he was healed. Hallelujah. So these are people who walked by faith. Another example in the Old Testament was Hannah. Hannah went to the temple. She was praying to God in 1 Samuel chapter 1, verses 11 to 18. She went into the temple. She cried out to God. Even as she was crying out to God, the man, the, the, the priest of the, the priests in the house thought that she was drunk. That means that people have been coming into the temple drink, drunk. So if you see somebody walking into church drunk, don't worry. It happened in the Bible. So because if you didn't think that that woman was drunk, if, if it had not happened like that before, you would not think that she was drunk. So she prayed. And her prayer of faith was that, God, if you will give me this child, I will dedicate him to you. She knew that God could save her. She knew that God could give her the child. And as, after she prayed that prayer, the Bible said her countenance changed. The, the, and she worshipped God. When you finish praying the prayer, of, the, the prayer of faith, the moment you know that you have been heard, you begin to thank God. You don't go back to that prayer. We never heard that she went back and started crying again. The Bible said that she went, she worshipped God, she ate. And then she went and did what needed to be done. And then she brought the baby back to the temple. So the prayer of faith answers to us. To us. The second thing, the second prayer that I want to talk about 
is the prayer of praise and thanksgiving. The prayer of praise and thanksgiving. In the book of Acts, chapter 13, verses 1 to 4. Now, in the church that was at Antioch, there were certain prophets and teachers. Barnabas, Simeon, who was called Niger, Lucius of Cyrene, Manaim, who had been brought up with Herod, the Tetrarch, and Saul, as they ministered to the Lord and fasted. The Holy Spirit said, Now separate to me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. Then, having fasted and prayed and laid hands on them, they sent them away. So, being sent out by the Holy Spirit, they went down to Seleucia, and from there they sailed to Cyprus. This prayer is also called ministering to the Lord. If you find out that, if you, if you notice that in that scripture, it didn't say they were praying and asking for bread and water. They were, as they fasted and as they ministered to the Lord, they were not asking for anything. Most of the time, our prayers minister to ourselves or we are asking God for something. It is in the atmosphere of ministering to the Lord, the praising and worshiping God in prayer, that's when God actually does things for his people. We must always get into the right attitude at the right place of worship. And I said the right place of worship to minister because a lot of times when we are worshiping, we say we are praising and worshiping God, we are singing praise and worshiping God, we are actually granting our own desires. Most of the songs that are sung are songs for us. But the, what God is asking for here are songs that minister to God. Songs that praise Him. Songs that honor Him. When we spend time in praise and worship, a lot of what we want to pray for will have been answered. Like this afternoon, as we worshiped God, this morning and this afternoon, we will find out that you will begin to have testimonies. You will find out that, I, I, we didn't even get to pray too much. Testimonies will be flying out. That's how God does. The Bible says that when we enter the courts of God with thanksgiving, we enter, we enter his gates with thanksgiving, we enter his courts with praise, he abides there. He, he resides in the presence and the, the praises of his people. So when we praise him, the Lord himself shows up in our situation. Yeah. There was a story that I read, there was a pastor, and uh, the member of the church had a baby that was very sick. And uh, so the baby was always convulsing, was having convulsions. So the, the pastor went with his wife, and they prayed and prayed and prayed. The baby was just convulsing. After about, they prayed all manner of prayer. They rebuked them, cast them out, called heaven to earth, bombarded the gates of heaven with every kind of prayer. But after a while, the, the baby was just doing, doing that. The pastor's wife now burst into praise. Praise the Lord, glory be to God, we honor you Lord, we exalt you Lord. And they found out that the baby stopped convulsing. So after about 10 minutes, the baby started again. And the, the, the pastor started praying, yeah, let's do it again, let's pray. And they went through the gyration of praying again. And the pastor's wife started again, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. And the baby stopped convulsing. So they now got the message. They started praying and the baby stopped convulsing. So prayer, praise is important in our prayer. We must attend to the presence of God with praise and worship. One example is found in the book of Acts chapter 16, verses 16 to 34. The story of Paul and Silas. Now it happened, as we went to prayer, that a certain slave girl, possessed with the spirit of divination, met us, who brought her masters, who brought her, her masters much profit by fortune telling. This girl followed Paul and us and cried out, saying, These men are the servants of the Most High God, who proclaim to us the way of salvation. She was disrupting their service. And this she did for many days. But Paul, greatly annoyed, turned and said to the Spirit, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out that very hour. So her uh, people, her pimps, they got upset. 
because they found out that it was it, that's, it, it, he's spoiling their markets for them. So they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace to the authorities. Next verse. And they brought them to the magistrate and said, These men being Jews exceedingly trouble our city, and they teach customs which are not lawful for us being Romans to receive or observe. Then the multitude rose up together against them, and the magistrates tore off their clothes and commanded them to be beaten with rods. So they were thrown into, into prison. Next verse. Next verse. Next verse. 24. Having received such a charge, he put them into the inner prison. Verse 26. Let's go. 26. Suddenly, verse 25. Let's look at 25. But at midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. And the prisoners were listening to them. They were not quiet. Everybody heard them as they were singing. Go back to 25. It was midnight. It could be real midnight. But for you, it could be the midnight of your life. It could be night is dark. It could be the darkest place you can be right now. But if you can do like they did, in their midnight hour, they sang hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. So as they sang to God, verse 26 now, suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were opened, and everyone's chains were loosed. What did they do? They praised God. Hallelujah. Ministry to the Lord brought deliverance to them. Now watch the song that they were singing. They were not saying, Paul did not look at Silas and say, Silas, are you there? No, I'm here, I'm not sleeping. Silas did not say, Paul, why did you not just leave that girl to be doing what she was doing? Why did we have to cast out demons? You know, they were not complaining to one another. Oh, what unto us? Oh, we are all dead. We are done for. No, they didn't do that. They praised God. They sang hymns. The hymns was not like, oh, when we get to the sweet by and by. Oh, Lord. You know, the song, the song, some songs sound very, very good. But they are not believing songs. The choir is laughing. Because on Friday we still talked about it. They brought a song. By the grace of God, I've been given the privilege to stand with them every time. They brought a song and they were singing the song. They said, You are incredible. I was like, ah, Incredible doesn't sound good. How can God be incredible? I don't care who sang the song. God is not incredible. If you say God is incredible, that means you are saying God is unbelievable. Because we went on the dictionary, the first meaning of incredible is unbelievable. So we changed it right away. So some of the songs that you hear here, we have to change, we, we personalize it. We are a faith church. So anything that has, that comes out of this place must be faithful, full of faith. So any song that you want to sing, some songs are very good, they sound very good. Listen to the lyric of what praise we are singing to God. When we are singing praise to God, it cannot be by ourselves. I need you, I'm desperate for you. <laughs> I'm desperate for you, but that's not praising God. You want to sing song that praises God, that talks about the magnificence of God. You are marvelous, Father. You are awesome. And you will see, even when in, in the book, I'm, I'm going to go ahead of, my, of myself, Jehoshaphat, when he was in trouble, he sang songs to God. He called the, 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 the Levites, the pastors, and called all of them together and, the, and the, the choir and they sang songs to God. They told God how wonderful he is, how beautiful he is, how awesome he is, the God of heaven and earth. That is praising God. It's not, uh, 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 I don't even know the songs anymore that we sing, that our body will be shaking and we'll be all having good spirits, but it's meaningless. I come from Anglican church. Yes, we sing everything. Even our Bible will sing. Kiyoluwa, 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 and you will respond, and you too. <laughs> we sing everything at church, and by the time we get out of church, we forget everything we have sung. But let's pay attention. We sing praise 
to God. We worship God. We, we, we don't just look at songs that sound good. They were not singing praises to themselves, but to God. If you look at that verse 25, it says they sang to God. They prayed at midnight. They were not complaining. Praise and worship is a prayer of faith. When we praise and we worship God, we rest knowing that God has answered us. Hallelujah. We begin to learn to praise God even before trouble starts. And then when we have trouble, we will know we will revert to praise. The story was told about a lady, and I'm sure Pastor has told that story quite a few times. She was given a sack letter, a pink slip at work. When she got the pink slip, she brought it home and laid it on the floor. And without instrument, without drum, she started standing. God, this is for you. you. You are bigger than this letter. You are awesome. You are glorious. You are greater. The next time she got a letter from them, it was a letter to restore her back, not to her position, but to a higher position. She did not weep. She did not call anybody. She just sang and danced to God. That is what God does. The Bible said that the, the, the chains of everyone that was there was released. As you have sung in the presence of God today, every chain holding you down is released in the name of Jesus. You see, tests and trials come to everyone. But it is our attitude during those times that makes the difference. Here you will go into the attitude of praise and worship. The difference will be clear from the one that went into mourning and depression. The devil was the one that was after Paul and Silas. And he's still the one that is after you bringing fear to you. Fake evidence appearing real to you. We can turn the table around the devil with our praise and our worship and get God to get through our situations. Hallelujah. Yeah. In Acts chapter 13 verse 2, the Bible said that they fasted. A lot of Christians fast about everything. Instead of believing the word, we say we are fasted. What are you fasting? You just go into fasting without even thinking about what it is. Without asking God, okay, God, what, what is this situation? Oh, you know, I'm not saying that we shouldn't fast. Of course, we are going into another two weeks now. We, we do fast in this time. But it must be meaningful. If it is not meaningful, it is hunger strike. Hallelujah. There are some attacks that the devil will bring to you and you need to tell the devil, you know what, I'm not going to miss a meal just because of this thing. I'm going to go and praise my God. So you tell the devil, you know, I've been fasting because of you all this time. I'm not fasting today. This one, it is praised through. And you will see God at work. The devil does not like it when we obey the word of God. Hallelujah. There are some battles that you don't need prayers for. You only need praise and worship. You don't need prayer sometimes. You just, like that lady, you just turn it into praise and you worship God. For, the, for our time, the number three one is united prayer. United prayer. Acts chapter 4, verses 21 to 31. Acts 4. So when they had further threatened them, they let them go. Finding no way of punishing them, because of the people, since they all glorified God for what had been done. This is the issue of Peter and the rest. For the man was over 40 years, Peter and John, at the beautiful gate. The man was over 40 years on whom this miracle of healing had been performed. Let's go. And being let go, they went to their own company, companions. Let, let, let me stop there. Who did they go to? Their own company. And reported all that the chief priests and elders had said about them, or said to them. So when they heard that, all of them raised their voice to God with one accord and said, Lord, you are God. What is that? Worship. You made heaven and earth. Worship. And the sea and all that is in them. Who by the mouth of your servant. So they began to remind God who he is. They began to worship God. And, uh, and next verse, verse 26. The kings of the earth took their stand and the rulers were gathered together against the Lord and against his Christ. For truly against your holy servant Jesus, whom you anointed, both Herod and Pontius Pilate with the Gentiles and the people of Israel were gathered together to do whatever your hand and your purpose determined before to be done. Now, Lord, look on their threats 
and grant your servant. Don't look at us. Look at what they are doing. And grant your servant all boldness, with all boldness, that they speak, that they may speak your word. Verse 30. By stretching out your hand to heal, and that signs and wonders may be done through the name of your holy servant Jesus. And verse 31. And when they had prayed, that united prayer, the place where they were assembled together was shaken. And they were filled with the Holy Spirit. And they spoke the word of God with boldness. These people were put in prison. They were beaten. And everything was done against them. But when they went to their company, their believing company, they prayed a united prayer. Using praise and worship first. And then asked God to give all of them the same thing. This is practiced by believers. A lot of prayers are not used to united or corporate prayers. Why do I say that? When we are praying, we do united prayers a lot in this church. Like this morning now, that was united prayer we did, that Dickness led. We do it every Sunday, every Wednesday, every night vigil, every second Saturday of the month. We do united prayers. But a lot of Christians have noticed, they don't understand what united prayer is. United prayer is very powerful. It is a prayer that everybody prays together. And exactly what happened in the book of Acts happened here when we do that prayer. Hallelujah. In the, in the I, I, I want to talk because he has given the testimony by himself. And I can give that testimony. One example that happened here it, as United Prayer. This brother, okay, lived in the United States for a long time, for some time. Got into trouble with the country. Came here. He, was, he didn't know no, he came. He didn't even know he was in trouble. It was after he left that they found out that he was in trouble. Came here and started to live his life. Got married with a child. And decide to, okay, continue with his, with, you know, get his immigration here. Hallelujah. Coming to church, praying, united prayer, gaining the country for himself, the country of Canada for himself. Every time we pray, we pray about immigration. We pray that everything, everyone that is looking for papers must get united. We pray together as a united, as a, a unity. Hallelujah. And this servant of God, night vigil, came to pray the prayer of, you know, let me back, let me go back a little bit. For him to finish this step. Now, over a few weeks before then, they suddenly found out that he had issue with the U.S. So U.S. contacted Canada. They arrested him. They put him in prison. Just like they did with Paul and Silas. But one thing he did when he was in prison, his roommate in prison, he converted that person. Still preaching the gospel while in, in jail. Preached the gospel and that person was released. By the miracle of God, he was released. Because when I saw the rap sheet that they gave him, I just said, Oh Lord, oh Lord, oh Lord, oh Lord, let your mercy. That is what he needed. He needed because when I look at the things that they listed that he did, I don't know. With those people. You know how lawyers will do now? They listed everything to persecute him for. But God went ahead of him. He was released from jail. Now the report, the, the listing came from America. That this is what he did. These are the things that he did. Okay, so he came out of jail. The next thing was that, okay, he needed to finalize his stay here. So they told him, you need police report from the states. From where the rap sheets came from. So he came to the <laughs> he came to the servant of God. What should I do? Should I go undercover? I'll be busy underground. Underground? Should I should I just raise up my hand and say, just carry me? Pastor said, go and get the report. And on May 31st, we were here. He sent him for the report. On May 31st, we were here. We prayed united prayers. All of us together on night vision. The same day, remember, every time, every crossover to the following month, the Lord gives his servant a word for the month. The word for the month of June is a month of wonders. As this servant of God finished on here, he went home, checked his mailbox, big 
package from America with its results. Hallelujah. And he opened the package. The state where they said he was a fugitive, they said that they should arrest him, that he ran away from America. No record found. Why did that happen? Because God went ahead. Other prayers were said, but United Prayer kept it. It was just the next day. That is how powerful United Prayer is. It is powerful that God will move. But let me give you something. It must be united. You must go to people who you believe the same way. If he had gone to the servant of God and he said, ah, you know what? There's nothing we can do about this one. Raise up your hands or run away. I can put you in my basement for a while, but you must run. If he was not of like man, or if he came to church and we were praying United Prayer, we said, Lord, only your will. If it is thy will, let him stay. And if it is not your will, let him go. You know? We are not sure, but we were so sure that he will make it. And he's making it. That was the last thing they required from him. The next letter he's getting is welcome to that. Letter. The place was shaking. There is power in corporate prayer. It is a prayer of one accord, no division, one vision. Hallelujah. United Prayer then was probably written and one person because I had, I tried to imagine how they would pray the same thing. Somebody has to call it out. And say, let us pray, Father, in the name of Jesus. Now you see why we call our prayers out. You see why we write it out so that we can all sit and be united. Hallelujah. Amen. It brings glory to God. If you look at Second Chronicles chapter 5 and look at verse 13. Second Chronicles chapter 5, verse 13. Quickly. Indeed, it came to pass when the trumpeters and singers were as one, united, to make one sound, and be heard in praising and thanking the Lord, and when they lifted up their voice with the trumpets, and cymbals, and instruments of music, and praised the Lord, saying, for his good, his mercy endure forever, the house of the Lord was filled with a cloud. There was so much glory. I'm going to end with this one, because I will finish it next week, I promise you. Hallelujah. Because there is no way I can give you eight prayer points. Uh, eight prayer topics in five minutes. Pastor has warned me that I must finish by one. Hallelujah. And I'm a woman under authority. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, it brings glory to God. And it brings God's glory back. So, united prayer is a very important prayer. I want to encourage you. Come to prayer meetings. Power is there. Come to prayer meetings. Answers are there. I cannot begin to give you a lot of answers that we have seen through this because we could be weak in our own faith. But when we come together to pray united, our faith becomes bigger and we are able to charge forward. We hear a word. Somebody brings a prayer point. We pray that prayer and we get home. We continue to pray that prayer. Because we don't know everything. We don't know all things. But when we come together, this person is here, that person is here. In unity, we are able to get what God needs to give to us. I pray for you this afternoon that as you go, your prayer altar will be changed. Amen. Every time you call on the name of the Lord, He will answer you. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen.